Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. You do not try to be on time. You do it. And you change whatever has to happen to be on time. And if you're continuing to not be on time, then you haven't found it yet. Then you rack your brain looking for, how am I doing this? How am I doing this? Not, I'll try harder. Hi, it's Joseph, and thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. Want to hear me hold my leader group accountable for showing up late and make them squirm? Here's your chance. Oh, and you can learn something critical about how to change anything as well. As Yoda said, try not, do or do not. There is no try. He was right, and people love to quote him. Want to actually learn how to embody that Jedi wisdom? Or do you just want to watch movies about other people doing it? Up to you, but keep listening. This episode is from a recent weekly member webcast. Members get a ton of different ways to become better professionals, including attendance to the live courses I teach. Beginning January 11th, 2018, I'll begin teaching an 11-week course called How to Manage and Be Managed, The Missing Manual. You know, management is like parenting. Many people do it, and they mostly have no idea what they're doing, but somehow they make it work because they have to. The result? Stress, wheel spinning, overwhelm, and millions of dollars in lost opportunity. This course is the missing manual. We all should have been taught in high school. Forget everything you learned about management. You don't have to motivate your employees. You don't need to empower them, and you definitely shouldn't be supervising them. This course trains you in the basics of the clear and open model for management. Increase engagement and productivity, eliminate supervision and wasted resources. It's a counterintuitive approach. I've been training leaders in one-on-one calls for over 15 years, offered down for the first time as an affordable online course that I'm going to teach live the first time through. While the course is about training management skill, it's also perfect for non-managers because it gives employees what they need to understand what a manager is doing with them and for them and why it's in their best interest to help. For more information about the course, please go to clearandopen.com slash how dash to dash manage clearandopen.com slash how dash to dash manage. Thanks so much for listening. Now let's dive in. Brady is in time. I I just ran, so I'm a little winded. Kurt, (laughs) Kurt is also in time. It's amazing after all of these months. Remarkable. In time, not on time. How do you do that? Talking to me or Kurt or both? Talking to anybody who continues to be in time and with any kind of regularity in their life. I believe this is the first time I've been in time. Is there, are there any other places in your life where you're just in time or even late on any kind of regular basis? There's less places. There used to be more. So notice the non-answering of the question. It wasn't a non-answer. That's the truth. There's less places. There used to be more. Was the question, are there less places than there were before? No, that was not the question. No. Therefore, it was a non-answer to the question. It's up to you guys. You you guys want to dance around the truth for the next hour, or do you want to just get right to it? It's up to you. I'll I'll go either way. You tell me what you want. I'll, I'll jump in here. Mm-hmm. When I'm just in time, or mm-hmm. late, it's usually because a couple of things are going on. I'm trying to squeeze every last ounce of time or um, some finish something as much as I can. And I call it, I, the story I tell myself is I don't want to waste any time. Mm-hmm. And the I'll, result is? I'll work up to the the last possible minute that I can be uh, on time. Mm -hmm. And And most of the, I would say most of the time I'm on time and meaning early, I'm Mm -hmm. often early to my um, sales appointments. 
It's not 100 percent yet. But that's when you ask what's going on or how do you do that? That's that's what's going on with me when I'm late or just barely in time. Great. Great. So the story is I, if I squeeze more in, then I will, I'll not be wasting time and that will give me a good result. Squeezing. Yeah, I'd say that's that's a fair, fair characterization of what. Great. Yep. It's exactly what I did. Great. Is it true? Um, maybe, maybe not. I haven't, I don't think about it much. Well, that's why we're talking about it. So the yeah, story, okay. the story is if I can just squeeze a little bit more in, I'll get more done. Do you remember the big rock story from the career workspace course? The time management guy who's putting rocks in a jar. I recorded it so I would never have to tell the story again. Do I have to anyway? <laughs> time management expert in front of a group of business students takes out a one gallon mason jar. Stop me if you remember. Starts putting big rocks into the jar. Says, this is your life. Oh, right. Is it full yet? Is it full yet? Yeah, yeah. And they say no. And he puts gravel and then sand and then water. And then what's the... Moral of the story, he asks, and someone says, you can always put more in. You can always do more. And he says, is that the moral of the story? That's the tempting answer to give. It's a trick story, you see. So someone says, if you try really hard, you can always fit more in. And, the, and he says, no, that is not the moral of the story. It's if you don't start with the big rocks, you'll never get them in at all. The big rocks represent what's most important to you. So when you're in that mode of squeezing everything in, do the most important things get done? Probably not. The attention to your own health, physical, mental, emotional connecting with your employees the way they need the high level strategic work. You know, it's like those moments where we tell ourselves, well, I'll get to the really important strategic work. I'll just check my email first this morning and then I'll do it. Yeah. And then suddenly, well, I spent all morning dealing with these little odds and ends from the emails, but after lunch, I'll get to that strategic work then. And then, Nah, I'm too tired to do strategic work. I'll do it tomorrow morning. And so on, and so on, and so on. So I have a question about that. Peter, <laughs> you, the gentleman in Pennsylvania. I, I think that I'm understanding the point you're making, but I also want to go back to some things that you've said over the years of using spare moments to fit in small things. And I, I, I guess I need some help mm -hmm. understanding how these two concepts relate to each other. Well, it's easy. Yeah, that's a great question. It's easy. If the using spare moments to fit things in results in you being late or overwhelmed, then you're not doing it right. Fair enough. You see, it's you can do, we're talking about context here, not content. Okay. It's not about being on time, you see. It's about living a life such that you're on time, you know? So for example, when you go to a doctor's office and they make you wait 25 minutes to see yeah. the doctor, do you know how many things are going wrong to produce that result? Probably a lot. Many, right. Staff not showing up on time, overbooking, um, you know, the doctor not uh, doing things as efficiently as he or she could, you know, extra steps of paperwork that could be streamlined. There's all sorts of stuff. The on-timeness is just the end result. So being on time is about everything except for being on time. Living your life, as you said, in a, in a such that it results in? Or? Sure. That keeping your word. Yeah. Back to the doctor's office, the level of integrity in the office, the, the, the caring about efficiency, any number of things. This is the thing. You won't know what it is. 
you won't know what will have to change. You just start with, I'm on time every time. And then you go looking. See, most of you guys are still trying to be on time. And trying to be on time is not, that, that's, that's inside a realm of, I'm not going to change or be curious about what needs to change. I'll just hurry a little bit faster so that I can try to be more on time. That's not what it is. That's trying. And you can improve a lot from trying, but it's not a wholly different world. The wholly different world happens where you go, that's it. I'm never late again. Now, how do I need to reorganize my entire life, worldview, paradigm of reality in order to make that happen? That's completely different because you don't know where it's going to take you. It may result in you realizing you're overcommitted and needing to say no to commitments, reorganizing your org chart, changing the time you wake up in the morning. Change, you see, change because you've decided this is not going to happen anymore. That's different than I'm going to try to improve it. You see, it's completely different. You do not try to be on time. You do it. And you change whatever has to happen to be on time. And if you're continuing to not be on time, then you haven't found it yet. Then you rack your brain looking for, how am I doing this? How am I doing this? Not, I'll try harder. You see, that's not what it's about. It's not about trying harder to be on time. It's about change and finding the way you do it. How, when you're late or just in time, how did you do it? How did you do it? Change that. Don't try harder while doing that again. That's not what it's about. That's insanity, right? Doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Well, I hit my snooze button six times in the morning and then I check email and then I check email right before a meeting. And, 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 but if I just squeeze in a little bit harder, then maybe something will change. No. No. Show me someone who's consistently or even regularly not on time. And I'll show you someone who's afraid of change. It's just resistance to change because you don't want to actually look at some structure in your life, some behavior that is producing that result again and again and again. And timeliness is just one thing. How about, um, you know, uh, difficulty with money, running cash flow problems, you know, how is it that there's always more month at the end of the money every month? How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? There's a system. Well, I'll do better next month. I'll pay more attention to money, to money next month. Great. It's a good intention, but it won't make a difference until you actually look at those $4 lattes you're buying every day. You know, it's about change. What actually has to change? You identify it and then you change it. But if you look at through the lens of timeliness as this thing is like, well, it's something you can try at and improve on while that's true. It's a whole different world from just doing it. You just do it. So it seems to me that having certain devices that support in content being on time is okay as long as we've we've done the introspection about how to live our life to, in a way that it results in being on time the way you've just described. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, it, it seems like uh, Asana, Asana and calendars have functions in them that are designed to, to make up for the fact that human the human mind is great for coming up with ideas, not for holding things. Mm -hmm. And so it would, and, and so it seems like having a way to use certain alarms and notifications is, is another way to support doing the things that, that you've committed to do. But what you're saying is that you can't use that. That's not going to, that's not going to really get at the problem unless we've, looked yeah. at ourselves and found what it is that we're, where we're resisting change and being willing to, to yeah. address. 
Yeah, that's well said. So let's make a, a, a fine distinction in a, in a different way. There's two ways one has of relating to change, trying to change and actually changing. Trying is bullshit. Try not, Yoda said. Do or do not. There is no try. This great thing they used to do, I don't know if they still do in the landmark education course, uh, the, the first one, the forum, where they say, okay, everybody, on a count of three, let's, let's do this. You guys all sitting down, let's do this. On a count of three, I want you to try to stand up. Okay, ready? You're all going to do this. Ready? One, two, three. Try to stand up. All right, wait, I think Ed won the contest there. How come? What happened? Nobody, nobody actually stood up. Why not? Ed made some movements. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Go ahead, Peter. Go to Scott. Um, oh, I missed that. Sorry, there's a lot to track at once here. So I think that uh, my, my conclusion was that there is no try. There is stand up or sit or sit down. Yeah, so it's a really interesting thing to play with. For if you if you usually someone stands up, but I guess you guys know me too well. So none of you stood up. That's good. That would not be trying to stand up. That would be standing up, right? <laughs> but but at least some of you just sat there. And that's not trying to stand up either, right? Ed and apparently Scott too, I missed it, showed some effort related to like looking like you wanted to stand up. And that's what trying to stand up looks like. And it was more comfortable staying sitting. So I chose all this. <laughs> trying was, I tried. <laughs> yes, you try to. So in, in landmark education, in this course, they, they, they do this for like 10 minutes or whatever and talk about it. And then the conclusion is trying is failing while looking good. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's trying. It's failing while looking good. Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Be sure to visit clearandopen.com for the latest tools, articles, and free resources to help you on your journey. Thanks for listening and bye for now.